Here we're going to talk about connectivity in a mobile app. We'll discuss some issues, we'll think about what the user experience should be, and we'll finish off with writing some code to determine your current network status. In, in a mobile app, you're going to encounter more than one type of network. The main ones, of course, would be cellular, either home network or roaming, and Wi-Fi. And the big issue, of course, with a mobile app is that you might not always have a network available. It could be that there's some physical barrier to the signal, or it could be that the user has disabled the data connection, either by turning off data roaming or putting the device in flight mode. So it's probably a good idea before you begin an operation to test for connectivity and let the user know if there's a problem. Testing before you start isn't enough because you could lose connectivity in the middle of an operation, so you probably want to monitor your connection status and let the user know if something goes wrong. Bandwidth can also be an issue. It varies depending on the type of network you're talking to. If you want to be clever, you could figure out the network type and use that to estimate the time that each operation is going to take and keep the user informed. Another polite thing to do would be keep the user informed when they might incur extra charges. So both cellular, home network, and roaming are considered metered connections, which means the user has paid for a certain amount of throughput, and if they exceed that limit, they're subject to overage charges. The user is going to know when they're roaming. On Android and Windows Phone, they'll see a special symbol in the status bar, and on iOS, they'll see a different carrier name. So the user is going to be aware when they're roaming. On Android and Windows Phone, your app can programmatically determine whether or not you're on a high-cost network. Currently, you can't do that on iOS. That means that when you are on Android or Windows Phone, you can determine that you're on a high-cost network and ask the user for consent before you begin a networking operation. That way, if they do go over their limits, they won't be surprised by the overage charge. And here's the last user experience issue. It might be nice to put up an activity indicator when you're doing network activity. You can, of course, use the platform-specific controls. Or if you're doing a Xamarin Forms app, the page class has a really nice convenience. It has an activity indicator built in, and you just control it by flipping this Boolean property, set is busy to true, the indicator shows up, set it to false, and it disappears. Now let's turn to writing code to determine network status. Each platform supplies APIs to do this. If you're on iOS, you might use network reachability. If you're on Android, it would be connectivity service. And on Windows, it would be network information. It's a little bit tedious to write that code for each platform you want to support. And determining network connectivity is such a common thing to want to do that there are cross-platform abstractions where your code calls into the cross-platform layer and then it dispatches down to the native APIs for you. And there's multiple of these available. The one we're going to look at is called the connectivity plugin. It has pretty broad platform support including the ability to use it in a PCL, so you can put your network connectivity testing in your shared code. It supports all the major operations we were just talking about, test for connectivity, note, be notified when uh, connectivity changes, determine all the available connections, and so on. Let's just look at those first three operations. Everything you do with the connectivity plugin starts here, so it uses a singleton pattern, so you're always going to be working off current. To test connectivity, you just look at that property. If you want to be notified when connectivity changes, you subscribe to that event. And in your handler, you just look at the isConnected property. And finally, to look at all available connections, you go to the connection types property, and then you can just enumerate through all available connections and look at what each one of them gives you.